Hello everybody, welcome. In this short screencast I want to show you the structure aspect of language definition in MPS. This is typically the place where you start defining a language, because this is the place where you define the concepts out of which your programs will be built. Now if you step back and look at a piece of code like this one from a high perspective, what you see is not a sequence of characters or not a sequence of lines, but instead it is a hierarchy. It is a tree. It's a tree that is rooted in the topmost element. In our case it is the script itself. That is the root and it has children. Roughly there's one child per line mapping here, but different languages might have completely different structure. So here uh, this line representing a command that states that we require a certain library for the script, this is a child of the script. This line is also a child of this of the script, just like this one or the next one. Well here we're getting to a more complex scenario because now we have a subtree. The if statement itself is a child of the script, but if if statement itself has children, it has a child for condition and it has a child representing the body of the if statement. MPS lets you visualize this. So you can highlight, let's say, this if statement, a subtree of the whole tree, and you can open the node explorer to explore the tree. So we see the root of the subtree is the if itself. And you might also notice there's a reference to some sort of concept saying the concept is, is if statement. So this is saying that you know, the node here is of certain kind called if statement and the kind of node is called concept in MPS. And our if statement itself has three potential children. So one for condition, which is a not expression and it itself has a child called original, which is the heading, the heading concept, and so on, and so forth. True branch is another child, as a command list containing two commands, turn left and find door. And there's a false branch, which is an empty command list, so that there are no children there. So you can always visualize a program as a tree, you can call it abstract syntax tree, or AST for short, or you can call it, call it, or you can call it models. So here we have a tree that would, could represent some code, there's a root node that holds all the other uh, nodes, and they are organized hierarchically, and they have parent-child relationship, so they form a nice hierarchy. So in our case, script is the root, and then at some point there's an if statement, and is a, as a child, one called condition, one called body. The one for condition contains some expression. The one for body uh, holds a, s a command list, a list of commands. On top of the parent-child relationships between nodes, you can also have links that go across the hierarchy, potentially even going across the tree, so pointing to another tree. So these are called references, and you typically use them for things like method calls or variable references and things like that. So places where you want to refer to something defined elsewhere. In uh, the robot script, the find door is an example of this. Find door is a routine invocation, so it points to this definition here, which is defined in, in some other part of the tree and here is only a pointer pointing there. So for example if you start changing the name here it changes the name at all places where the routine is being referred to. And the pointer might also go to a completely different tree of the same model. So for example in the library called common, if we go there, there are routines like fetch for example. So we might call a routine fetch from somewhere. So now this reference is pointing to another tree of the same model, so it's pointing to the common library. A tool called Scratch, which is used for teaching programming, provides a very nice illustration of the idea of programs or models being trees built out of some concepts or components. 
in Scratch, when you build a program, you've got a palette of visual components that differ in shape and color, and you combine them together in, in, in to, to build a model, to build a program. For example, if you take the, the if statement, or the block that represents an if statement, then you immediately see that there's a mis missing hole, a place where you are supposed to place a condition and then there are two other two other places where you're supposed to put in statements and the shapes only allow for certain types of nodes, certain types of shapes to be placed in there. We can draw the parallel now to uh, our robot script. Uh, there's an if statement here. Now the if statement accepts a condition here and body here and optionally also an else an else branch over here. And to look at the definition of the block, to basically to look at how the shape is defined, you have to go to the concept definition. So this is the definition. So this is an equivalent of uh, you know seeing the if statement block on a palette somewhere. So here this is the definition. An if statement contains three children condition which is a logical expression, and uh, then two command lists, one for true branch and one for false branch. So we can think of languages as collections of concepts. A language defines concepts that you may use to build no to, to create nodes and build trees out of these nodes. So now you can distinguish the model and the meta model. In the models, you use nodes to build your programs, and each node refers to the meta model to a concept that defines the structure of the node. So in our example, a concrete node for an if statement, this one, refers to a general concept in the language that defines the structure of the if statement. And this is pretty much all you need to know to understand the structure aspect of language definition. So in structure, you define concepts, plus some other optional things, that define the abstract model for your language. And you define concepts in an object-oriented way. So you might have a concept like this if statement that inherits some capabilities from a super concept, in our case, abstract command. An abstract command in this language, abstract concept represents all concepts that are some sort of statements. So it's like a common predecessor for all statements in this language. So wherever an abstract command can be placed, an if statement is a good replacement. Similarly, for the condition, condition we, well, for the condition we indicate that it must be a logical expression, and that's exactly one expected. And logical expression, if we go to definition, it's an abstract concept. And if we view the hierarchy, we'll see that there are many sub-concepts of this abstract concept that are concrete concepts for concrete conditions that can be placed as conditions uh, in, the, in the if statement. And true branch and false branch accept command lists. And if we go to the command list, command list is an abstract command which contains 0 to n of abstract commands. So any abstract command is good enough to be put in, in a command list. So far I've been talking about defining children. You may also define properties. Properties hold values of certain type, typically either typically either, either a string, or integer, or boolean, or any of, of the other types that are defined as part of your language. So you might define your own types for properties as well. Well, and the last element, references, this is a place where you define references that go across the tree hierarchy. Like here, we've seen the find door call to the routine defined elsewhere. So if we look at the definition of find door, find door is a routine call. So it's also an abstract command, so you can put it wherever an abstract command is requested. And it holds a reference called definition pointing to routine definition. 
and routine definition is this guy. This guy, if we go to definition of its concept, is a routine definition. And the routine call puts it into references section, telling that this is a reference going across the hierarchy pointing to a routine definition. Okay, this is all for structure. Thanks for watching. Constraints will come next.